Hello YouTube. Welcome to your car care companion. Today's video is on the braking system. The second most important system in a car or any moving vehicle is the braking system. I say second because the first and number one most important system in a car or any moving vehicle is the knowledge and understanding of the vehicle in the mind of the driver or operator. Next are the brake system components from the ground up. The road, the tires, the brake pads and brake shoes, the calipers and cylinders, the brake discs and drums, the brake lines, the brake fluid, the master cylinder, the brake pedal, the brake lights, and the emergency brake. First up, let's look at the road, the road conditions, and the tires. You might not think of the road as being a part of your braking system, but the braking system relies on friction. So because the tires have to have friction on the road for your brakes to work, when you really stop and think about it, the road is a very critical and important part of the braking system and is increasingly important that you pay attention to the road as conditions change, such as wet, snowy, icy, gravelly, or any kind of a road condition that's less than dry, warm concrete. The road conditions is a very important part of your braking system to consider when dictate, determining how you're going to drive. The brake pads and brake shoes are the actual friction surfaces that make contact with your drums or your discs. What is the difference? Usually brake pads are smaller and they have a faster reaction time than brake drums and shoes. Brake shoes usually have a larger surface area and, have, and the drums have a much greater heat sink mass. So that's why you find them on large trucks and large vehicles because there's a lot of mass and a lot of material there that the heat of friction from those pads can be absorbed into. There are many different types of material that pads and shoes are made out of from semi-metallic to ceramic to uh, Kevlar. There's many different ones that are used for different purposes, right from racing to heavy trucks to just everyday driving. So talk to your local auto parts um, specialist or your dealer to determine based on your vehicle and your driving style what material type is the best for you. Brake pads and brake shoes do need to, to be changed periodically and to change them or determine when they need to be changed, you need to check the wear and that will have to be done visually. You actually have to take the pads off or at least take the drums and the wheels off so that you can actually look at the side of the pad, the side of the shoe to see how much they have worn. Next we have discs and calipers versus drums and cylinders. Now calipers apply pressure to the brake pads and the pads apply pressure to the brake disc and cylinders apply pressure to the brake shoes and shoes apply pressure to the brake drum, both of which stop the tires from turning, which is how the braking system works. When you put your foot on the brake pedal, there's a brake switch that turns on your brake lights. It's important to periodically check to see if that light is working correctly, especially if you have a third light. You want to see if that third light is working correctly. Many accidents have occurred because the brake lights simply were not working and the car behind you could not tell that you were slowing down. Accidents are a result. The brake lines, the brake fluid, and the master cylinder. Well, the master cylinder is how the brake fluid is distributed to all of the brake drums or brake uh, discs that the vehicle has. It sends the, the fluid to the caliper or to the cylinder. And there's a reservoir that sits on top of it, and that holds the fluid that feeds the master cylinder. The brake fluid is uh, a static fluid that's non-compressible that actuates the slave cylinder, which the slave cylinder 
Uh, and a disc brake system is actually the caliper. And the slave cylinder in a drum brake system is a cylinder that pushes those brake shoes out to make contact with the brake drum. In, the, in, in, in a nutshell, the slave cylinder is whichever cylinder does the actual work. And then the master cylinder is the one that sends the fluid down to the slave cylinder for it to do the work to apply the brake. Again, I want to touch on the brake lights and then I want to talk a little bit about the emergency brake. It's very important, as you can see, to have your brake lights functioning, especially when on the freeway. There's a brake indicator, a switch on your pedal at the top that will turn the brake lights on when the pedal is depressed even slightly, even if the brake is not actually applied. And this is actually a good practice if you decide to slow down to just touch the brake pedal lightly to flicker your lights on so that the car behind you knows that you're slowing down. Now, when you apply your emergency brake, I want to touch on this point many times throughout many different videos so that people know it only applies to rear wheels. In most vehicles, when you put your emergency brake on, it only applies the rear wheels and this is increasingly important if you're going to do a rear wheel brake job because when you jack up that vehicle you no longer have any emergency brakes when those rear wheels come off the ground especially if you have a rear wheel drive even if it's in park you have no way of braking and that's why it's equally as important to make sure that before you jack up a car you make sure you're on level ground the car is secured, meaning it's in park or first gear, and the wheels that stay on the ground have wheel chucks in front of them and behind them.